The third standard in the area of institutional accreditation and quality assurance has to do with human resources. You know, as we use the word institutions, but really the foundation of institutions are human beings yeah. and the management, the care, and the development of human beings within the institution is probably the most important thing that we do. Yeah, and actually in the standard, the way we formulate it is that uh, human resources in an institution um, are fit for purpose and managed for flourishing. And we, we use this very strong word in the standard uh, to, to reflect that at the center of what an institution is, there are human human beings, and and clearly, as as Christians, as theological educators, who better than than us can actually affirm uh, the centrality of of humans in an institution? But it goes beyond uh, the care and the priority of human beings, because these uh, human beings uh, are taking up roles within the institution, whether they're staff, whether they're faculty, whether they're students. Or stakeholders. Yeah, so all sorts of elements kind of come into play here. Things like, you know, uh, care of your staff, uh, development of, of the staff and faculty. Um, but, but it is also, in a sense, uh, protecting our students as we think of, of human resources because we not only want to put those that are the personnel working in a school at, at the center of the attention of the school for, for their well-being, but we want to make sure that students that are coming to a school also get the best. Uh, in terms of the personnel that's there. So we, we talked about fitness for purpose of both staff and faculty. You want to unpack those? Yeah, to, to use an image uh, that's by a well-known author, we want to do our best to make sure that we have the right people in the right bus sitting in the right seats. <laughs> and when that's the case, then everyone is much happier in the institution and the institution is accomplishing its mission, its purpose. Yeah, so clearly, we're looking in institutions for staff that are qualified. So if you're going to have a librarian, someone who's a qualified librarian, the same in administration, uh, the same in leadership positions, and, and obviously the, the, the faculty requirements as well, both in terms of their academic qualifications, their ministry, and, and clearly their character as well, again, uh, in both staff and faculty, the, the, the character of those that are working in the school that is just so important uh, for the entire community, and we'll, we'll come to this in a minute. Implicit also is the fact that we, are, as institutions of evangelical ethos, are empowerment institutions. Mm -hmm. So our faculty and staff are in empowerment mode. That should mm -hmm. be at least our, our, our aim, to help them enrich their qualifications mm -hmm. as, as much as we possibly can. Yeah. No one likes policies, but I had a friend that said, policies are like umbrellas. You need them when they rain, when it rains. <laughs> and so we, we built into this particular stra uh, uh, standard uh, a number of policies that we're suggesting for HR, for human resources. So things like continued professional development policy. How are you going to develop your faculty and your staff as ongoing professionals? Uh, job descriptions, uh, salary rates, uh, social security issues. Uh, so just a number of issues that are there as policies that, in a sense, put legs on the intention of putting human beings at, at the center of what we are as learning communities. And they also play a great role in preventing conflict or resolving conflict, which are often the result of lack of clarity in various policies. Right. So this is standard number three, human resources.